Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Right Now Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Gillette, the creator of the Blue Framework and also owner of Gillette Solutions. I'm excited to have you join us today because today we are talking about mission statements. Now, before you run away, stop the video and or stop the audio and say, no, I, wanna, I don't care about mission statements. It's the same thing. Everybody talk. Okay. Mission statements in my research are actually amazingly powerful for you and for organizations. They're powerful for your brain. They're powerful for motivation. They do so much for us. And I want to give you the reasons why you should create a mission statement and how to create a mission statement. This simple, really 10 to 25 word sentence can fundamentally change your life and your business. It's something that I require all my clients now going forward to do because of the power of what it does. So let me share my mission statement with you, which I do have memorized because I want you to know that I am in this and doing this. And it's not just me talking about things that other people may or may not be talking about. I believe it. And it's making a difference for my business in big ways. Mission statement for me is to help thousands of business owners shift their mindsets and habits so they can become the leaders they're meant to be. Help thousands of business owners shift their mindsets and habits so they can become the leaders they're meant to be. This mission statement, I'm going to come back to at the end to show you how this process has dramatically impacted me and my business. But first of all, why? Why a mission statement? Why, why have a, a simple 20 word sentence? Well, a well crafted mission statement provides you with clear purpose and clear vision. But here's the kicker this is the really cool part that I loved and I assumed, but I had to do the research to confirm. It can activate the brain's reward system, including releasing dopamine, which is a transmit neurotransmitter that's associated with pleasure and motivation. So when you create a mission statement that you keep in your mind and you keep in front of you, literally on pieces of paper or on your device or on your computer, it's going to give you a dopamine hit. We've all heard that term, like, oh, I need my dopamine. <laughs> it's that motivation that will move you, th you forward. It's a draw. It's a magnet. It's that lighthouse. It's whatever metaphor you want to use. But it's going to make a huge difference for you to draw you towards where you need to go. So other components of a mission statement is that it has your values and your identi and identity in it. So your mission statement should be a reflection of your values. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have words that are your values in it, but it could. And later I'm going to talk in another ad episode about the importance of values. But for now, just know that it needs to represent your values in one way, shape, or form. When you have a mission, not only does it give you a sense of identity and belonging to a higher purpose, it also gives those around you that are underneath your leadership a sense of identity and belonging. There's a, there's a scripture that says, without vision, the people perish. I'm, I'm butchering it slightly, but basically that's it's saying that if there is no vision, if there is no mission, people die. If there is no clarity of where you're to go, this is dangerous. Now, in the business world, people don't necessarily die. And in today's world, if there's not a mission, people don't die. But inside, we're dying. I just heard a stat today on the radio that said 76% of people that are working right now are also actively looking for another job for a different job because they don't, if they had a sense of identity and belonging in that organization, they wouldn't be looking elsewhere. They would know that they belonged, which means they wouldn't feel like they need to long for something else. So they would be there and not longing for something else. So they're belonging. So they believe they need to stay where they are, right? So mission statement can help accomplish that for your business. It also connects with purpose, your deeper purpose, a deeper purpose for those around you, and a deeper purpose for those that are helping live it out or achieve it, I should say. And then, of course, what's beautiful here on the on the brain side of things is it activates part of the parts of the brain that are associated with self-worth. So you're serving your people by helping them to have a mission statement and remember that mission statement. 
And I would also encourage you to have them create their own personal mission statement, right? Because that's going to be even more motivating than the one from the business. It also is going to give focus and direction. So when you have focus and direction as a result of a clear, again, we're talking a 10 to 25 word sentence, it's going to prioritize efforts. It's going to give a sense of direction. And here's another cool brain part. It activates the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for planning and decision making. I'm going to guess that everybody that's listening that has a business <laughs> that has a business wants their employees and themselves to do better planning and better decision making. I know I could do better planning and better decision making. So, a mission statement will help you accomplish that. Okay, but how do you create one, right? What are the most effective mission statements? What are the components? Well, there's dozens and dozens of examples out there that I could share with you. And they all are tied to a very simple set of like a, a, a set of fr phrases. And it's it's actually starts with two to do something very specific for an organization or in an organization or to do something specific for the world or do something specific that's important to you. Right. It starts with that. And then. You move on to so, so that, right? What's the purpose? So let me give you a couple examples. Most people know Oprah Winfrey to empower and inspire others to reach their full potential and to use her platform. She says my platform to give voice to the voiceless. That's such a beautiful mission statement. Now I'm not a huge supporter of Oprah, but that is a wonderful mission statement. And she has definitely done that in many, many, many ways. That is a wonderful thing what she has done. How about Nelson Mandela? To dedicate my life to, to the fight for freedom and equality for all people. Okay, Jane, um, Marie Curie. To advance scientific knowledge through research and discovery, particularly in the field of radioactivity. Let me give you a, a business version. So uh, I, like, I like this one quite a bit. We've got Microsoft. I'm not even a Microsoft guy, but I like theirs. It says to empower every person in every organization on the planet to achieve more. Okay, what is the commonalities here? It, again, it's to, to do something, to empower, to organize, to be, to prevent and alleviate, to inspire, to spread, to make, to have, to be a teacher, et cetera, et cetera, right? So all of those, there's some sort of a to, there's some sort of kind of identity in it. And then there's a so that, and the so that always involves service to, almost always involves service to other people. And I want to encourage yours to have that service to other people, to do something specific in service of other people. That is the formula. Okay. Here's some more specifics about creating a mission statement that works and that's effective. You want it to be intrinsically motivating. Okay. So when you create this mission statement, if it doesn't really resonate with you, if it's not striking your heart, then maybe it's not quite right yet. And that's okay. When I finally got my mission statement figured out, as I shared with it with you before, to help thousands of people shift their mindsets and habits so that they can become the leaders they're meant to be, when it finally became clear, it was actually through a prayer on a car ride home from a networking event. I'd spent months trying to figure it out. And then it finally became clear. And when it became clear, I started crying. I cried for like 10 minutes on the way home because it just was so important to me and so powerful to me because it completely resonated with what I was already doing and what I really, really wanted to do and am now doing. Second, it needs to be specific and achievable. So the most effective mission statements are intrinsically motivated than specific and achievable. So specific is there's specific details to it. So how am I going to do my mission statement? I can only really speak about mine. I can kind of infer from others, but for mine, it's about mindsets and habits, right? So what does that mean for me? It's intrinsically motivating for me to learn the mindsets and habits and how that world works. So learning the mind and the brain and the way that it all functions, get getting some insight on that. And then how do habits work? Why do habits work? Why is it so hard to break habits? Understanding those things, because if I understand those things, then it can allow me to help thousands of business owners 
And if I can help them with their mindsets and habits, if they can shift their mindsets and habits, because I've helped them through coaching and training and all those things, then they're going to become their leaders they're meant to be. And that is super motivating to me. And that's really powerful for them. And it's obviously a service to others. Is it achievable? Yeah, but it's a stretch. And that's really important. It needs to be specific and stretch you. It doesn't even have to be achievable, to be honest. It just needs to be something that's close enough to achievable that it's worth it. It's like shooting for the stars and hitting the moon, that that classic idiom. It's so if you hit the moon, you're pretty stoked about how far you went, right? But if you don't have something that's stretching you, then it's just really a goal, and that's fine. But goals get you toward your mission statement, towards your mission. But they're achievable. We want something that's real stretching. It just makes you change who you are and how you behave and what how you think. That's why I believe mission statements are so vital to me accomplishing my mission because it's habit changing and it's mindset changing. <clears throat> Third, it's communicated and reinforced. Okay, what does that mean? First of all, who is the most important person that you need to communicate your mission to? It's yourself. You have to communicate your mission to yourself first and foremost. And this is why I said at the beginning that you want to memorize it. Because then it's on your heart and on your head frequently or in your head frequently. And it's easy to just bring up and remind yourself of. Secondly, you communicate it with others. And now, obviously, on this show, I've communicated my mission statement to you twice now, all the way through specifically, because I believe in it. And I also want the, the accountability. Right? I talk about the accountability pass. If you haven't heard me talk about that, I encourage you to watch or listen to anything that's related to that that I've talked about, because it will help you accomplish your mission statement, or at least stretch towards it. But if you're communicating with others, it calls your integrity into question. Are you really going to do that? And in your business, it calls your integrity into question as a leader of the people that you're asking to live out and be that mission statement. Because if you're not, they sure as heck aren't. So this challenges you in great ways as a leader. And then finally, how is it being reinforced? Again, back to accountability. How can you create accountability around your mission for you and those that are helping you accomplish it? Because that accountability is going to reinforce the possibility of it happening. It needs to be integrated into your decision making. That's going to help reinforce it. And that's why I believe your values also need to be tied to it. So, in summary, a mission statement changes your brain. A mission statement motivates you. It gives you that, that high, that dopamine hit that gives you pleasure and motivation. It activates the part of brain that is associated with self-worth, and it activates the part of your brain that is responsible for planning and decision-making. So make it motivating, make it stretch you and make it specific and communicate it frequently. If you do that, it will change the way that you see your business, the way that you experience your business, the way you experience your leadership, and the way other people experience your business and your leadership as well. Mission statements are worth the time. Again, the formula for mission statement is to do something specific so that others can benefit from it. And that's 100% up to you what that's going to be, but it is that simple. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you like what you've heard and you want more, please subscribe to this podcast and also, please make sure to share and give this thing a review. I appreciate you, and I'm excited for you to come up with your own mission statement. If you have questions or want to learn more about this, please visit GilletteSolutions.com, and you can click on to schedule a call with me, and we'll dive deeply into your specific situation and help you discover a mission statement that works for you. Thanks again.